So I'm currently on the upper deck of the Qantas Airbus A380. Hi Wolfie. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> and here we have two Bad Elf units and also a Dynon Avionics D2. Just to keep the Qantas guys honest. So that was a short clip when I first boarded the aircraft and was setting up the equipment. But in today's video, we're going to address two points. Now, I have covered these previously, but I'm still seeing flat earthers making comments in relation to both of them. The first point we're going to look at is that the GPS, the two bad elf units that I took on the flight, worked fine all the way across the Pacific Ocean. And we'll have a look at them actually operating in flight, and then I will cover the GPS track log and how we can upload that to Google Earth and verify that the track was seamless. And the second part, we're going to look at a real aircraft artificial horizon and prove that it has the capability to self-correct. And by doing that, we are defeating one of the Flat Earth claims about aircraft artificial horizons. They state that because the gyro is maintaining its level, we should see a change in the attitude as the aircraft flies around the curve. What the artificial horizon is doing is constantly correcting to the local direction of down. And I'll show you how quickly an electronic artificial horizon can do that. So here are the two bad elf GPS units that I used on the flight and I have already downloaded the track log to the iPad. You can customize the capture rate and I was using one capture per second during the entire flight. So that means we have over 50,000 separate waypoints. And there you can see the flight was almost 15 hours. There are two logs, one from each GPS. And when we load that, you can see the entire route from Sydney to Dallas in the USA. And what we have at the bottom here is an indication of the speed the altitude, and there you can see what is called a step climb or a number of step climbs. And that is when the aircraft becomes lighter as it burns fuel during the flight. It can climb to a more efficient altitude for that weight. And here we have the distance profile. So what we can do with these KML files is load them up into Google Earth and take a closer look. So if you have Google Earth installed on your computer, just clicking on the KML file should load it into the Google Earth software. And then you will see a slider tab at the top where you can move through the progress of the flight. And there you can see that red line is going back to Sydney because I'm going in reverse. I also have the day and night turned on. So you can see at what point of the flight we entered the night and when we again entered daylight before landing in Dallas. You can zoom in. And you can very accurately see our movements at the airport as we were taxiing for departure. All the way through to the destination. You can see we entered the night. We flew mostly through the night, which is always good for sleeping. And arrived in daylight in Dallas. And again, because the GPS was recording a waypoint every second, we have a very accurate depiction of our movements after landing. right up to the terminal. The important thing to note is that the coverage was seamless during the entire flight. And what I'll do now is just play some footage of when we were actually crossing the equator.
So as you can see, the GPS worked fine across the Pacific Ocean. Now this was on the upper deck of a Qantas Airbus A380 and with a window seat. I have noted that sitting in one of the centre aisles on the lower deck, you don't have as reliable GPS reception. But certainly on the upper deck, it was flawless. So in the next part of the video, we're going to look at how an aircraft artificial horizon can self-correct. I have demonstrated this previously with a mechanical artificial horizon, and I will place a link to those videos in the description below. For this demonstration, we're going to use the Dynon Avionics D2 pocket panel, and it's worth reading the description because this is not just like a phone-based artificial horizon app. Dynon is a leader in designing and manufacturing MEMS-based AHAS attitude heading reference systems using calibrated solid-state gyros and accelerometers. This hardware is combined with an advanced flight dynamics algorithm to accurately determine aircraft true attitude without drift. The D2 can be turned on in flight and it quickly determines true attitude. A high quality, highly sensitive GPS receiver is also built into the D2 to provide GPS ground speed, altitude, vertical speed and ground track for enhanced flight situational awareness. The D2 is not a smartphone or tablet app or GPS derived simulated instrument panel. Unlike those consumer devices, the D2 is a dedicated avionics instrument with a real AHAS and designed and calibrated for in cockpit use. You can rely on it to give you accurate flight information. It will be on and ready when you need it. It isn't going to switch away from your attitude indicator to display a calendar reminder. So it's a neat little unit. Let's take a closer look. So here is the unit powered up and I'll just talk you through some of the features in the display. The brown obviously represents the ground and the blue the sky. At the top we have a small balance ball indicator as you would have on a real aircraft and that simply tells you if the aircraft is in balance. You can see as I tilt the unit that ball moves out accordingly. We have a GPS derived speed indication here and a GPS derived altitude with a vertical speed indication also. Down the bottom we have our course direction and this arc represents the rate of turn. So if I move that in this axis you can see that magenta bar moving accordingly. And of course it's showing us the position of level. As I pitch down or pitch up, we get the corresponding indications accurately. So as we saw in the description, this unit uses gyroscopes and accelerometers to give us a true AHAS indication. If we move the unit at rates of roll, pitch and yaw equal to what we could reasonably expect on an aircraft, it's not going to topple. It will sustain accurate attitude information. However, if we move it too rapidly, we can confuse the gyroscopes and the unit will need time to recover the horizon. There you can see I moved it rapidly and we get the warning that the horizon is recovering. If we move it extremely rapidly, we can fool the unit completely. There you can see, it is showing completely incorrect information, but within a few seconds, it has now corrected. So even though the external case of the unit is upside down, the instrument knows which way is up, and it knows that because it is sensing the direction of down with the accelerometers. If we now move the unit to the upright position, it's going to track quite accurately. And you'll see there's just a slight error there, but within the space of a few seconds, it will self-correct. So let's really try to confuse it. Horizon recovering.
horizon recovering. It has no idea until it senses the direction of down and makes the correction. Now we'll try to put the unit upright but get an inverted horizon. And there we have it. And again, the accelerometers will allow it to make a self-correction. Let's take a look at some footage of this occurring on the flight itself. So as you can see again, this unit had no trouble making self-corrections during an actual flight. And the point of this demonstration is to prove that the artificial horizon can make self-corrections. And in this case, the corrections are made with reference to the accelerometers, which are sensing the direction of down. On a globe, the direction of down is towards the center of the Earth. So it doesn't matter where you are on the globe, this unit will correct to the local level by sensing the direction of down, wherever it is located. So moving halfway around the Earth, changing your true orientation by 180 degrees, will not confuse this instrument. It will simply self-correct to the new direction of down. And you saw just how quickly this unit was able to self-correct. It literally took seconds. When we are flying around the Earth at 450 knots ground speed, it takes eight minutes to cover one degree of the Earth's curvature. Eight minutes for one degree. This was able to make corrections within seconds. So it has absolutely no problem making the corrections as we're moving around the curvature of the Earth. And it is doing it so smoothly, you don't even notice any change in the apparent attitude as you're flying. This unit uses accelerometers. Its mechanical counterpart uses pendulous vanes, which I have demonstrated previously. The way these units self-correct completely defeats the flat earth argument in relation to the instruments and how they should be indicating changing attitude flying around curvature. That is never going to happen because of the self-correction mechanisms. So there is point number two, an aircraft artificial horizon can self-correct proven once again. And I'll just give you a quick peek at my new toy.